Hey y'all, how y'all doing? This is my review for Love and Marriage Detroit. Now, I had no plans to review this show. Don't know if I will continue to review it, but I figured I'd let you all know what was going on over there in case you participated in the blackout and didn't watch. So first we have Brandon and Christina. They've been married for 11 years and have two daughters together named Brittany and Bailey, ages three and six. Okay, Brandon and Christina are supposed to be this power couple with a penthouse that overlooks Detroit or whatever. Brandon started talking about the first time he saw Christina, which was on Twitter. He saw her little booty poked out and decided to follow her, and then she followed him back, and they ended up getting married in less than six months. And she moved to Detroit four days after their wedding, and he claims that they've been on a roller coaster ride ever since. And I bet they have, because for one, they didn't know each other when they got married. Who uproots their whole life and get married to somebody they've only been knowing for six months? Yeah, they've been married for 11 years, but like he said, it's been a roller coaster ride where they've probably had more ups and down, you know, more downs than ups, I mean, okay? So he's an entrepreneur. He has a company called Star Factor that he started 17 years ago where he grooms and develops, you know, different artists. So Christina says that, you know, she's a fashion designer, social media influencer, and image consultant, and says that she's been doing it for about 12 years. Brandon says that she's really good at what she does and pretty much she'll style everybody but his clients. She said that she used to style his clients. And I was thinking that, okay, when he first said that, I was thinking that the majority of his clients are probably women. And when she said that she used to style his clients, I immediately thought that she probably don't style his clients anymore because maybe he's been caught at some point fucking around with some of his clients. Okay. Next, we had Russell and his wife, Colby. Russell and Colby Harris, okay? They've been married for three years. And um, even though she feel like uh, Russell is her, even though Colby feels like Russell is her Clark Kent, she says that she's the best thing that ever happened to him, okay? Russell likes to work out. And I always say, beware of men who are, you know, just so into their bodies because most times they want to make themselves look as good as possible so that they can attract, you know, women, even if they already got a woman at home. He said that Kobe was his homie. Okay. And then Kobe had to add that she was also his lover and his, you know, friend. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to like him. All right. So Kobe says that she's an influencer and a content creator who focuses a lot of her content around home, family and fashion. Russell, he runs a nonprofit organization in Detroit called Soar Detroit um, that focuses on literacy and sports, as well as being in, you know, the Army National Guard. And they have a one year old daughter together named Kendall. But anyway, they said that they love to kick it with their family and friends and go to grill outs. And then, you know, they showed the scene where they met up with the other couples. Um, The first couple that I talked about, Christina and Brandon, you know, so they got together, kids included, to enjoy a little barbecue for Father's Day. Kobe said that, you know, she met Christina through her husband and Christina's husband, Brandon. Christina thinks of Kobe as a little sister and says that she's been hanging out with her for the past three years. So, y'all, the third couple had pulled up, Dr. LaToya Thompson, a sports physical therapist, and she's also, you know, the owner of Opulence Wine. She says that it's a luxury wine brand, but ain't that what Martel said about his Inez wine? I already know how these folks you know, Carlos bring to us like to put on for the cameras and make themselves look more grand than they are. So my guards are up with these folks. I wouldn't be surprised if they all are, you know, criminals and assholes, just like the ones on the other show and all drowning in lawsuits. I wouldn't be surprised. But anyway, Dr. Latoya Thompson is married to Anthony Thompson, the second. Okay. He works for Live Nation, which is that entertainment company that promotes tours um, it was founded by Jay-Z and I believe that Jay-Z is still partners with them. But anyway, Anthony says that he is also the owner of AT Network Production Studio. They have three children together named Anthony, age 11, Ava, four, and eight and nine. So this couple met at Michigan State University and they've been married for 14 years. Anthony said that Brandon is a friend of his and he's been knowing him for over 20 years. They met on the music scene and Anthony was saying how Brandon is a laid back person, but very passionate about the things he's trying to do in life and y'all while he was talking about how he met Brandon he used the term 
what he's he used the term things of that nature so that let me know that this guy anthony just might be full of shit you know what i'm saying because things of that nature is a signature term of martell's martell ho and we all know how full of shit he is i don't like prejudging people and i could be wrong about him but we'll see i think we all have suffered from ptsd from loving mary chumsfield thanks to carlos king and his fucked up definition of entertainment but anyway, as far as the others um, connection, Latoya and Kobe are sorority sisters. So she has seen uh, Latoya has seen Kobe out and about at different events. Christina says that Latoya is a go getter and she's the bomb. She called her a silent assassin and said that you don't hear much from Latoya, but she comes with it. So I guess that means that Latoya moves in silence a little like male. Um, you don't know she's been working on something until, you know, it's ready to go. I don't know. I guess we'll see. So they all had gotten together that day because it was father day, you know, father's day, like I said, so they were all going to celebrate it together. They had a nice little spread of food and, you know, as they all went to fix their plates, um, for them and their families, Kobe had said some shit that really irritated me and we've all heard it before, but I hate when women say it because I just feel like it's not true. So she said that she knows that a way to a man's heart is through his belly. And if you feed him well, he'll be satisfied. And it's like, girl, do you know how many women done fed their husbands well and they still done went and ate from another bitch table? They're never satisfied. They some greedy trifling ass bastards that hop from one house to another eating whatever they can from whoever they can. I bet you she cooked for her man and his ass still out there cheating because I get those vibes from him, okay? It's bitches out there that be throwing the fuck down. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking spam sandwiches, frozen pancakes, hot dogs, or hamburger helper. I'm talking fried chicken, mac and cheese, apple pie, shrimp, lobster, steak, loaded mashed potatoes, goddammit. You name it. And the next day, he'll be at the other bitch house eating at her table, Okay? So one of Kobe and Russell's friends was there at the barbecue with them. His name was John Bravo Samuels. Okay. I guess he went on a Vegas trip because Brandon asked him, how was it? John said that it was incredible. And Brandon said that his wife, Christina had saw the roster and was like, I don't think you should go. So he was like, once again, I couldn't show my face. And of course the other guys started laughing at him. Y'all know how they be doing when they feel like the homeboy be, you know, controlled by their woman. So Russell said, well, how did you frame the conversation? Brandon said, I don't, you know, I didn't, what do you say? I didn't ask. Russell was like, so you just say you going? Brandon said, she never tells me that I can't go. She just bombards me with all these questions and statements and discourages, you know, me from going. So he said he would rather not go than to hear her mouth. So Brandon's wife, Christina, comes over to the table to sit down in the middle of their conversation, Okay. Anthony, Mr. Things of That Nature, tells Brandon that he's going to join his class, the man movement class. Christina said, no, he would not be doing no such thing. Okay. Anthony was in a confessional talking about how the man's movement is important because it's a chance for men to have a voice to be celebrated and to man up. And it's like these guys, he said that some men don't you know, some men don't say nothing and he's there to help push them forward. So my take on that is that men do have a voice, but the problem is they use it to say stupid shit. And as far as them being celebrated, a lot of men tend to want to be celebrated, but ain't done shit to be celebrated for. They always want something for nothing, but they ain't going to talk about that because the truth hurts. So Anthony tells everybody that he's, you know, um, taking Brandon on a man's trip. And it's just going to be them, the fellas, a weekend trip. So pretty much the same shit that they did over on Love and Mary Chunsfield, where Maurice, Marceau, and Martel went on that guy's trip to Atlanta and ended up in a house full of nothing but women. Because guys can't never get together without doing fuck shit. They can't go on a trip and go fishing or camping or do some shit that makes sense. It always got to be hoes involved. Then when their wives divorce them, they ready to put them to sleep. Or when their wives go and do the same thing that they've done, you know, that they don't went out there and done, you know, they ready to put them to sleep. So Brandon's wife said, are y'all asking or are y'all telling us that y'all going to go on this trip? Anthony said that he's not asking. 
and that he don't do the asking shit. And that didn't surprise me because he comes off as a nigga who feel like he can do whatever he want, whether his wife is okay with it or not. And my thing is niggas who think like that tries, you know, to push their way of thinking onto other niggas and them other niggas. So fucking stupid because what works for one person don't mean it's going to work for you. You can attempt to go on a guy's trip without your wife's blessing, but be prepared for when you get back because she might not be there or your ass may be locked out. Okay. And it's not about the wife trying to control the man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they want to try to make it out to be. It's that when you get married, you can't be out there doing single shit. And a lot of these guys use these guys trip as a way to go out there and do single shit. Why would you want problems in your marriage? It's simple. You know, it's simple to say, Hey babe, I was thinking about joining the guys on a weekend trip. You ain't got no issue with that. Do you? And if you a good dude and haven't given her any reason not to trust your ass, she probably ain't going to have no issue with it. But because these guys today ain't real men, they some bitch ass niggas that like to play games. Their wives don't trust their asses. They don't trust them to go on no fucking trip with their friends, especially if they friends just like them. So when Anthony said, I'm not asking, his wife Latoya just looked around like she didn't have an issue with that. So Christina asked her husband, Brandon, she said, you asking or you telling? When Anthony said that he was going to um, take her husband on a trip, she should have been like, oh, really? And then had that talk with Brandon once they got home, because when she asked him that, was he asking or telling? It put him on the spot and had the other guys looking at him and waiting on his answer. And Anthony fat ass going to say, I know you ain't asking. He's the type of nigga that you don't want around your husband, okay? I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, he's been fucking around on his wife while out on, you know, while out promoting tours. Guys in the music business, they meet different women all the time. Women who desperate to get into concerts and will do anything. Women who desperate to meet celebrities and will do anything. Women who want a music career and will do anything. So it wouldn't surprise me one bit if Anthony has been cheating on his wife as if he should be cheating on anybody. He should be happy that he found somebody to say I do instead of no the fuck I don't. Okay. So Russell going to say the way that Christina talks to Brandon, if that works for them, so be it. But his wife, Kobe would never address him that way. And like I said, that should have been a conversation that Christina had with Brandon at home instead of in front of all of them, because it did seem like she was talking to him like a controlling wife, you know what I'm saying? Or like he was a child and was embarrassing him in front of the other guys. You know, she was in a confessional saying she didn't know about those other guys, but Brandon needed to ask. And she didn't know why he was acting like he was um, really about to go on that trip without her permission or her support. She sounded as if, you know, she was talking about her child and not her husband. And I didn't like that, even though I get why she wouldn't want him to go. So instead of Brandon answering his wife's question, he asked Anthony's wife, Latoya, if, you know, she just allowed Anthony to just do whatever he want. Because Brandon was probably like, um, you know. I knew I ain't the only one that got, you know, got to run shit by my wife. So Latoya said, no, she don't allow Anthony to just do anything. Okay. Um, Anthony said that she follows the word of God. And so I don't allow her to do anything, but that wasn't the question whether or not he allowed her to do anything. The question was directed towards his wife. And the question was if she allowed him to do anything. And she said, no. So pretty much she wanted them to know that Anthony could sit there and say what he wanted, but she knows what it really is. But something tells me that Anthony can get away with some shit because he was really confident with saying that he don't ask his wife shit with her sitting there. So maybe she just didn't want to be sitting there looking like her husband can do whatever he want to do. So she falsely debunked that. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. So Brandon was like, my wife don't prohibit me from doing anything. And Anthony said, good, that's what I wanted to hear. Brandon was like, it's just, can I go without the 21 questions? And Christina said, no, you're going to always get those 21 questions about my ass. And Latoya said, we need details. And I said, Latoya, but do you be getting those details though? Because your bootleg Luther Vandross looking ass husband is trying to convince everybody else that you don't. So one of the guys asked the ladies why they be asking so many questions. And Christina said, why not? Kobe said she don't know and asked her husband, Russell, if she really be asking 21 questions. And he said, no, not really. Kobe probably don't ask Russell that many questions because she knows all his ass is going to do is lie probably anyway. So, you know, 
Some women don't ask questions because they already know what their husband's out there doing. But anyway, these guys today are something else. They are something else. That's why once you become single and you experience that peace, you don't be in a rush to jump into anything else because you sleep better and feel better when you're not worried about what a nigga doing and who he doing and why he doing it. You know what I mean? They really think that they should be able to go on a weekend trip with their guys without telling their wives shit other than see you later. Like, no, bitch, who's going on this trip? What will you be doing on this trip? When can I expect you back from this trip? Will other women be involved with this trip? If you can't answer that, you know what I'm saying? If you can't answer those questions or don't want to answer those questions, then that means you had something. So the women ask the guys what the purpose of the trip was. Anthony tells them to relax, just like women take trips. Anthony's wife was in a confessional saying how she didn't care about Anthony going on a trip because she knows that the guys need their bromance. Anthony said just because Brandon got a little nice man bun sitting on top of his head don't mean that he and Brandon have no bromance. I say you never know because some of these guys be wanting to spend more time with their homies than they do their wives. You know what I mean? Brandon said that he hate feeling like he can't be trusted or supported. And when he said that, I was like, so have you given your wife a reason to not trust you? Because guys always like talking about what the woman does, but never why she does it. And that's because they are the fucking why. So just like I said in the beginning of this video, Brandon has done some questionable shit. And his wife, Christina, confirmed that in the confessional. That he has done some questionable shit in the past. So since he likes to do questionable shit, she gonna question him about the questionable shit that he does. And she told him at the table that she was just gonna you know, put it like this. He can go on that trip if he want to. So he have a choice. And that was that. And the guys just started laughing at him. So in the next scene, Christina and Kobe, you know, they met up at a kid's gym with their daughters. Um, they got a chance to talk while the girls played. There's a, um, 10 and, uh, 10, eight, ugh, can't talk right. There's a, um, 10 year age difference between the ladies, um, Christina and Kobe. Okay. Christina is the oldest. She's 40. But they have, you know, some things in common. They're both PKs, which is short for preacher's kids. Um, they're both influencers and they both are wives. And since Christina is older, she says that she enjoys being able to mentor Kobe on certain things. So Christina asked Kobe how things were going and she was telling her how she had to take a step back from creating new content for about a week or so, so she could regroup and figure out what direction she wanted to take her content in. So that opened the door for Christina to talk about what she was going through. And she said that she was in this new phase of her life. You know, she's turned 40 and it feels like she's had a um, rebirth. And she said that she was um, taking things on instead of turning things down. And she wasn't going to be putting herself to the side anymore. And she wants her husband to start helping out with the kids more because, you know, they both are parents and everything shouldn't be on her. She was saying how Brandon goes to work early in the morning and don't come home till late at night, which is affecting her and keeping her from doing the shit that she want to get out there and do. Um, you know, shit has to be done around the house and shit and with the kids. And since he's not there to do it, that means that she's got to do it. It's all on her. So, <clears throat> excuse me, Kobe told her that even though she don't feel put together, she looks well put together and told her that, you know, she was doing an amazing job as a mom and that it was okay to slow down and take a break and focus on, you know, her mental. And she does look good to, you know, be 40 years old. Um, Christina told Kobe that she appreciated her saying that because sometimes you get lost in trying to show up for everybody, and making sure everybody's good. And she pretty much want to get back to herself. She's been a mom for seven years and, you know, she's a wife and she says that she wears a lot of hats and it's overwhelming for her at times because, you know, um, sometimes she feels like she's going to cry. And that was that in that scene. Okay. So we're going to move on to the next one. So in the next scene, we had Christina's husband, Brandon, and his man bun grooving to the tunes of some bitch he had in the studio. He had Barry Gordy want to be okay. All right. And he was hoping to fill the void that Motown left. All I got to say is good luck with that. Okay. I ain't never heard of his ass before this show. He deals with a lot of aspiring artists, which probably means a lot of thirsty ass women 
who down to do whatever to get to where they want to go. I can see why his wife don't trust him. The girl's name that he had in the studio was Nyjah. Okay. And um, she's a new artist that he signed. And he said that he hadn't told his wife about that yet, that he signed this new artist. But he claims he signed her because, you know, she can make him look better and make him a little money. So his wife had FaceTimed him while he was in the studio with Nyjah. She said that she was just calling. Which is normal, I guess, especially if she doesn't get to see him that much since his ass is gone from sunup to sundown. She asked him who was he recording. And he told her the artist that was in town. He could have just told her who the artist was, but he said that there was a place and time to do that. So it would make, you know, he wanted to fix it where it made sense to his wife. But that time wasn't the right time. That's what he was saying. I say he's just so full of shit. Okay. He knew his wife wasn't going to prove of that shit. So that's why he didn't tell her. He knew it wasn't the right time because he knew what his wife was going to say. And he didn't want to deal with that. Christina asked him if the artist was recording an album and he told her no. And she just looked at him like, okay, well, why is she recording? He asked her if he could resume their session. Meaning, can you get off the phone so I can go back to listening to this girl do nothing? Even though she was in a booth sweating, acting like she was doing something. So his wife was telling him that she hadn't heard from him. So she was just checking in. This nigga tells her that she hadn't heard from him because he has a job. As in, bitch, why don't you go get one? These niggas are a fucking trip. Like, I don't give a fuck if you got 18 jobs. If you know you got a wife and kids at home, you fucking bunhead ass bastard, you check in with your family. Because at the end of the day, ain't nobody heard of not one of those fucking artists that your ass call yourself developing. So apparently you ain't doing too much down there in that studio. Or they would have went on to do great things in the music industry, okay? <clears throat> excuse me. He was, um, <clears throat> excuse me. He was telling her that when he get a break, he would call her. This is what he was telling his wife. She was like, when you get a break, like when is your ass going to get a break though? He tells her, you know, I'm coming home. So in other words, he would talk to her when he got home. She said, when are you coming home is the question. He says, I don't know. Meanwhile, the chick he had in the studio, Nyjah, was moving her little body around in the mirror, constantly looking at her ass, probably wondering if it was big enough to get that lady's husband's attention, okay? I can't stand talentless, thirsty ass bitches. I cannot. Or the married nigga that entertains them, okay? <clears throat> so this lame ass nigga tells his wife that he'll be home when the song is over and that his creative juices and energy was slowly dying. So can I get back to this session? These motherfuckers don't be in the studio doing shit, but swear they be working hard and hate when a woman be questioning the shit. So he was like, can I get back to this session or what? Christina said, well, what's wrong with you? And he told her that he didn't even know why he had answered the phone. I guess her being his wife didn't mean shit. Carlos sure do know how to pick these ain't shit ass men. He was talking to her like she was just another bitch that he was fucking with. Like, nigga, that's your wife. And he like, so was you just calling to say, hey, like he was really trying to get off the phone. She said, yeah, <clears throat> I was calling to say, hey, and to ask you what time you were coming home because I didn't know. So I can't call my husband. He said, I might as well just cancel this session because this whole little flow is gone. She said, why? Because I asked you what time you was coming home. He said, I told you, I don't know. He said, I told you, I don't know what time I'm coming home. Now what? Like. Why are you still on the phone? That's how he was acting towards his wife. And she crazy for sitting there letting him talk to her like that. So she was like, what's wrong? He said, nothing. I'm just in a zone. So she said, let me not break up your zone. I didn't know you were in a zone or that I couldn't call you. Or you were going to ask me why I was calling you like I'm not allowed to. I asked you to pull up to that studio and knock his ass the fuck out. But anyway... Christina was in a confessional saying how she feels that Brandon puts Star Factory before her and the kids. So Brandon said that when men work, they have to leave the house at least 40 to 60 hours a week. And that's all he do. But can what he be doing, what, what the shit that he be doing, can that be called work though? That's what I'm trying to say. Entertaining hoes that you ain't 
you know what I'm saying? That you know ain't going nowhere. But to a hotel with your ass if you want to. Is that called work? Can you call that work? But anyway, he said that maybe if he felt a little more loved and appreciated and catered to, then maybe he would try to alter his schedule a little bit. She was like, nigga, you got to come home so I can appreciate you. I would have been like, nigga, you can have all the time you want to work or do whatever it is you want to do. Bye. Get somebody else to do it. As in be married to your stupid ass. Y'all, let's move on. Okay. To this Anthony things of that nature guy. So he was working out with his son who's in sports. Okay. His wife meets him down there where they were, Latoya. He tells her that he had spoken to somebody about the wine, okay? And that person had told him that they needed to focus on distribution. Latoya said that she wanted to see her wine nationwide and internationally, you know, sold or whatever, eventually. She said that it was, um, her wine was started back in 2015. And Anthony has been doing a lot of the business stuff behind the scenes. He's her business partner, assistant, and marketer, Okay. She was talking about how they had to get back to Napa to work with their team there and some other places. So, you know, they got a lot of traveling to do. So that opened the door for Anthony to tell her that he needed to go back to Atlanta to talk to some folks. Okay, these guys know they be loving them some Atlanta. I wonder why he was like. I know how you get every time I talk about going to Atlanta. He was in a confessional saying how he went to Atlanta for a business opportunity to work with Disney Marvel. And it was when um, COVID had first hit. Latoya said that he made the decision to go without talking about it as a family. She said that she was working in the hospital and then had to deal with the kids at home. Uh, You know, they was doing the virtual schooling. So to not have him there during that time was hard for her. He said that had he not went back home, they probably would have been divorced. And it's like, how the fuck you just going to pick up and reside in a whole nother fucking state without taking it up with your wife? These niggas would do whatever they're allowed to do. The fact that they want to do the shit, that they even want to do it, speaks volumes. And it exhibits why they need to be single. I don't give a fuck how big the opportunity is. Is it bigger than your family? So he tells her that he kind of get how she feels about him being away someplace else and they married and they got kids. Okay. <clears throat> She's working. Okay. They got three kids. He want to be able to pick up and go leaving her with the heavy shit to deal with. If the shit was reversed, he would have had a fit. He talking about he kind of get how she feel, but at the same time, he don't want to miss an opportunity with Disney. His wife said that they've had numerous conversations about communication and there was absolutely no communication when it came to him going to Atlanta. So, you know, she was like, that, that shit is not okay. Not okay at all. She said his ass was like, okay, I'm going to do this and the family is just going to go along with it. He tells her that, you know, that's how it used to be back in the day. She told him that this wasn't back in the day. These niggas stay talking about what happened back in the day, but never talk about how men used to pay all the bills back in the day. These niggas today want to be able to do whatever the fuck they want to do, but still want you to help take care of the house and their ass. It's like, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. So when Anthony took off to go to Atlanta, his wife was thinking that he had done had a midlife crisis. But what that was was just him being an asshole because no real man would have did that shit to his wife. Real men consider their wives and not just themselves. OK. He want to be the man so bad, but don't know nothing about it. He going to tell her that it got to be Team Thompson. But how is he being a team player by going off and leaving his family without even talking to her about it? And also during a deadly pandemic. Sounds familiar, y'all? He told him, uh, she no, she told him to pretty much stop acting like she ain't on his team. You know what I'm saying? Like she ain't Team Thompson. Because if she wasn't, she wouldn't be there. Still trying to work shit out with his ass. Okay? So let's move on to the next scene, y'all. Ooh, that Anthony really irritates me. So in the next scene, it was Christina and Brandon. 
um, their 11th anniversary. And Brandon was saying how that was an accomplishment that they reached, you know, 11 years together because he didn't think that they were going to make it past five years because there were a lot of ups and downs. But the downs that they've had was probably because, you know, <clears throat> because of him caused by his ass. He even said that Christina has had to deal with a lot. <clears throat> excuse me, y'all, being married to him. A marriage already going to have its ups and downs, but I feel like they may have had more than usual because they didn't take the time to get to know each other, to make sure that they were the right fit for each other. He want a woman that's going to be okay with him fucking around with his artists and him coming home whenever he wants to. And she not that girl. And she want a man that she can trust. And he not that girl. He claims that no matter what they've been through, he ain't going nowhere. And was saying how Christina has a good heart. And that's usually, you know, how it goes. The person they get with has a good heart. And then they come along making it their mission to break it in two. That's why being single ain't as bad as desperate women make it out to be, okay? I'm all for marriage, but the marriage needs to be about something. Not just you being married just to say that you're married. If you miserable and sitting there settling with somebody's ignorant ass, trifling ass, narcissistic ass son, what's the point? You can do bad all by yourself. So Brandon blindfolded Christina, okay? And he had surprised her with a little outdoor picnic with the other couples. When he took the blindfold off, you know, it looked like she was happy to see it. Um, but me, myself, I would have preferred not to have my anniversary meal in the middle of what looked like a damn cornfield where snakes could crawl up into my ass and nibble on my intestines. However, it was not an actual cornfield. It was a lavender farm, someplace his wife had always wanted to come you know, because she um, loves lamp, uh, loves lavender. So, you know, she was happy that he remembered that. But anyway, he had some live music there. The um, Al Bettis band, never heard of him, but, you know, didn't sound bad. Russell was saying how he would have never thought like Brandon did. And his wife, Kobe, says she know because he's not romantic. I feel like these niggas will be romantic for the woman they want to be romantic for. It's just sad that that woman sometimes don't be their wife. You know what I'm saying? Or they'll be all romantic in the beginning to woo the woman in. Then once they get you, they'll be done with the romance. Okay. So she told Russell, um, Kobe told Russell to take notes from Brandon, but Russell seems to think that he is romantic. He said that he sometimes cook, you know, Kobe meals on the grill and he plays that romantic game called sex, typical asshole. And he probably be enjoying that shit more than she do to tell you the truth. OK, so I guess Russell was in charge of getting the food. So he told everybody that he had got them steaks, salads and potatoes. His wife, Kobe, was like, I thought I had the salmon. He going to tell her, no, nah, baby, you going to eat what I eat. <sighs> I wanted to say that that shit was just for TV, but it's hard to say that because there are men out there like that, unfortunately. So Anthony tells Kobe you know why he's saying that, right? Because he's been taking my classes. Anthony is really getting on my nerves, y'all. All this macho talk is probably because, you know, deep down, he probably feels like less than a man. Okay. I feel like his wife, the sports doctor, she got that wine, you know what I'm saying? On top of being a doctor and it's probably the breadwinner in the family. So, he probably got to do and say outrageous ass shit to make himself feel like the man. Okay. His ass probably ain't doing shit at live nation, but passing out flyers. Okay. And as far as his studio production company goes, what artist has he produced? I may be wrong, but that's just my assessment at the moment. Christina told him not to start that shit. It was her fucking anniversary. She told him not to start that shit and asked him if he's always been vocal and a male chauvinist. He told her that he's never been a male chauvinist and that's where she was wrong. I didn't think that she was wrong at all. So he was getting an attitude with Christina and asked her if she needed him to clarify things for her because she takes jokes someplace else. But it's like, you're not joking though. Don't get mad when you portray yourself as an asshole and people call you out for what the fuck you are. When Brandon heard him getting testy with his wife and uh, at that anniversary gathering, he turned around and looked at his ass, but he didn't say shit, okay? So Anthony 
he seemed to be real bitch ass, okay? Got some Martell Holt in him. Got some Martell Holt in him. He tells Christina that she needs to lighten up. That's what they want, for you to sit there and allow them to talk crazy, okay? Just because his wife may sit there and let him do that don't mean that everybody else will. Kobe was like, you talking about this man's movement and pretty much don't nobody want to hear the shit. So he was like, let me explain what it is, though. His wife said, please explain. And I was like, I know you're not getting mad because the other ladies are calling out your annoying ass husband. Maybe you should tell him to shut the fuck up then. So Anthony goes into explaining, talking about every since he was young, he's done a whole lot with young men in the community. And I was like, things like what? Because I'm starting to question your involvement with men by the way you interact with your homeboy's wife. Like you ready to fight her. And the man movement is about men that are building their faith. This is what he was saying. And the man movement is about building um, men building their faith, how to lead their families. And while he was saying that, Christina had looked over at him. And he didn't like the way that Christina was looking at him. So he goes, why are you looking at me like that? She said, I'm just taking it all in. Don't mind me. So he continued. He said his movement is also about influencing other young men and for men to stand up and know how to push to be successful. My thing is young men don't need to be influenced in the way that his ass is trying to influence them. It's like you a nigga that feel like a man shouldn't respect his wife or communicate with his wife and feel like he should do whatever the fuck he wants to do just because he's a man. You know what I'm saying? Just ridiculous. It's not the wrong with teaching young men how to stand up for themselves if, you know, they're being mistreated or disrespected. But a lot of times these niggas be the one cutting up. OK, it be these niggas. But anyway, Christina was in a confessional saying how she feel like Anthony just be talking and she think that he be saying whatever he feels sounds good in the moment. And I agree. Like, dude, it's OK to be quiet sometimes, especially when you ain't talking about shit. So, you know, Anthony, he getting mad at Christina, but she should be the one getting mad at him for trying to recruit her husband into some shit that he ain't got no business being in. Her husband don't need to be in no class of his unless it teaches him how to bring his ass home at a decent hour and stop being an asshole to his wife. So, y'all, then Anthony got to talking about how Brandon got, how before Brandon got married to Christina, he was like next up because he was so talented. And it sounded as if he was trying to say that him, that Brandon marrying Christina got in the way of him going further in his career. And I doubt if that's true. I don't believe that at all. <clears throat> he told Christina, Brandon, not Brandon, uh, Anthony told Christina that that's why she'll see him and the other guys so protective of Brandon because he's so talented and gifted. And that shit made absolutely no sense what he was saying. He's not being protective of Brandon. He want to teach him how to be an even bigger asshole to his wife. Christina told Brandon that they don't need to be protective of him. Ain't no him not meeting goals because of her. Because she's never held him back. Anthony just needs to shut the fuck up and mind his fucking business. Because what goes on in Christina and Brandon's marriage ain't his fucking business. Then, you know, he be trying to claw at Christina. OK. When she looking at his ass like he's stupid. Like he fucking crazy because, that, you know, what I'm saying how the fuck you want to protect a grown ass man, but not your own fucking kids packing your bag and going to Atlanta during a fucking pandemic. So this fucking Luther Vandross impersonator going to tell that man's wife that it's about just letting loose of him so he can go to the club to make it happen. First of all, ain't shit up in the club, but holes of alcohol. How is that conducive to his marriage? Then he's saying, you know, this shit at her dinner on her anniversary. He had no business telling that man's wife what to do when it comes to her husband. Brandon should have shut his ass up, should have told him to just shut the fuck up. But of course, he didn't do that because he was probably hoping that Anthony telling her what he was telling her would work. And it's not. If the club is the only place that he can boost his career, if that's the only place that Brandon can boost his career, then he needs to start looking for a new profession in. <clears throat> And right along with Anthony's old broke ass, because I believe that, you know, something tells me that Anthony is mooching off his doctor wife. But anyway, I guess we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But um, Brandon's wife said 
I don't do clubs, period. Christina said, I do not do clubs and I stand solid on that. So pretty much it's like, fuck anything that you're talking about. So this nigga, as an Anthony, gets his fat ass in a confessional talking about he was really confused with the situation. I said, maybe if you didn't have your motherfucking ass in that married couple's business, your ass wouldn't be confused. You got a lot to say about somebody else's marriage. He going to say that Brandon done said to him numerous times that he watched his career soar. So for him to be his friend, he want to try to help him, you know, as much as he possibly can. It's like, show me what you've done, Anthony. So I can determine if you can help Brandon or not. So Russell chimes in, okay? And he says to Christina, what's the pain point with the with the club? And Brandon's bitch ass just sitting there allowing them to come at Christina in a way that they shouldn't. Like she wrong for not wanting her husband to be involved with fuck shit. He can meet and develop artists from the subway or right there on the street. You know what I'm saying? That's where you can find the real talent. Christina was telling, you know, them that, you know, there was other ways for him to network and meet people. And there is. So Brandon tells them that, you know, they blowing the whole club thing out of proportion. And if there's a certain person that has access to a network that he don't have access to and they happen to be at the club, then that's where he's going to be. And I would have been like, you can be there. Just don't bother bringing your stupid ass home. Those niggas that's fighting for you to go to the club. You can go and shack up with them on a fucking couch. Okay. Then Russell going to say that, you know, they say club like it's a every weekend type deal. But if their wives went to the club, they would have a problem with that. Why? Because niggas expect for you to deal with shit that they wouldn't deal with. They can never take what they dish out. When you go to the club, you either drinking and dancing or trying to fuck. Most times, all of the above. They think somebody's stupid. <laughs> While Russell talking, his wife, Kobe, told him that he not going to the club ever. And he said, why is that? She said, because you don't do the club. And he agreed. He just wanted her to make it known that it was because it, it wasn't because she said that he couldn't do the club. You know what I mean? Like, boy, bad. Christina said that if Brandon makes a choice not to do something or go somewhere, that's ultimately his choice because she never tells him not to do it. Anthony's still running his mouth at this point, talking about you don't tell him no, not to do this or not to go there, but you tell him in different ways. She said he's a grown man that can make his own decisions. But if he don't want to end up in divorce court, he better make the right decision. Okay. So Anthony was like, we all know what goes on. You tell him in different ways, just like my wife tell me in different ways. He said, why do you think I'm not in Atlanta anymore? Because she told me in so many ways that if I didn't come back home, it was going to be over. The fact that he even went, you know what I'm saying? For her to even have to tell him to bring his ass home was grounds for it to be over. Like, who the fuck does that? You pack your bag and go to a whole nother state without talking it over with your wife. Latoya said, you motherfucking right. Because there are consequences for you just going out there making a move like that. Like your ass ain't got a whole fucking family in Detroit. Like, you want to be in Atlanta? Then stay your fat ass in Atlanta then, big boy. But I'm going to need for you to sign your name on the motherfucking divorce papers. Anthony said that it wasn't like he was moving there. He was going back and forth. Christina asked him if he was still going to do that just because that's what he wanted to do or because that's what he thinks should happen. Because he was sitting up there talking about how, you know, he was Detroit till he died. And I was like, now what the fuck do that got to do with anything? So because you from Detroit... You know what I'm saying? You can just pick up and go to a whole nother state without talking it over with your wife. Christina was right about him. He just talked to be talking. Anthony said that he supports his wife a thousand percent and he want that same support. But the thing with that is that his wife ain't trying to leave the state and leave him at home trying to figure out how to do her job. And with three kids, she never asked him to support no shit like that. And if she did, you know what I'm saying? He wouldn't. Brandon going to say that one of the worst things for a husband to experience is for his wife to keep him from his passion and his dreams because that's like oxygen for them and their support. You know what I'm saying? He wants their support on. He's saying that they want their wife's support on things that they're trying to do. When I tell y'all that these niggas are so full of shit, so full of shit, but Brandon ain't lie though. 
They passion is to mess around with other bitches and they do want their wives to support that shit. And he talking about the worst thing for a husband to experience is his wife holding him back from his passion and his dreams. Well, the worst thing a wife can experience from her husband is finding out that her husband is in a studio developing more than just his artist's career or finding out that he's messing with one of the chicks she was cool with, which is what he did, y'all. Y'all, Anthony, this big mouth, ignorant motherfucker, Anthony, going to sit there and tell Brandon not to let his wife hold him back. He was like, B, don't let her hold you back. Like, who says shit like that to a man in front of his wife? Like, you fat fucking bastard. Mind your fucking business. Who the fuck are you to tell them what to do in their marriage? And you don't even have your shit together in your marriage. And Brandon's bitch ass was just sitting there letting him disrespect his wife like that. But if he don't respect her, why would his friends respect her? You know what I mean? Christina said, I'm not holding him back from anything. I just don't feel like my husband needs to be in the club. She was sitting there explaining herself when she should have just got the fuck up and left. Okay. Left her bitch ass husband there to catch a ride with one of his protectors. Ain't no way I'm about to sit up there and explain myself regarding my marriage to motherfuckers who ain't in it. Katrina said, Christina said, you, you know, you trying to play it like I'm insecure. Then Anthony going to say, you were. That's a fact, sis. I'm convinced that Anthony wanted to go to Atlanta to play around with the boys because the way he was sitting there running his mouth to another woman about her marriage, it was giving I like back shots. And his wife probably knows that, which is why she wanted his ass back home from Atlanta. Okay? That fat bastard had a lot of nerve talking to Christina like that about her fucking marriage. Christina said, how is that me being insecure? Anthony going to say, come on, sis, you know your husband, a man, a character, whatever the fuck he said. She was like, I do know my fucking husband. And that's why me telling him that he can't go to the club is not insecurity. Y'all, who sits there and argue with a woman like that about her husband? That was some bitch ass shit. And her husband just sitting there was the ultimate bitch ass shit. Letting another man attack his wife about some shit that ain't even had shit to do with him. Even... Anthony's wife, Latoya, should have told him to shut the fuck up and worry about his own fucking marriage that was on the rocks. But she didn't. Anthony gonna say, you know, Brandon ain't even made up like that. Christina said she knows. No, she said that Brandon knows why she is like she is. And he was made up like that. So Christina told know it all, but don't know shit as Anthony that her husband, Brandon, knew the history. And that's what he don't know. Brandy going to say it's a time and place for that. I was like, oh, really? Why didn't you have that same energy as your friend sat there attacking your wife at her surprise anniversary dinner? So Anthony going to say the history, what history? Then took a sip of his wine like a little bitch. Those niggas are a complete and utter mess. Christina said she knows what her husband is built like and what he's capable of. And she refuses to let history repeat itself. She said that she never imagined having a husband that was you know, still going out to clubs. Kobe asked Brandon what, you know, was he looking for a new artist in the club? Christina told Brandon that given the history between him and artists, that's what she don't like. So Kobe was like, so what you talking, late night calls or texts? Anthony bitch ass going to say, is y'all talking um, business or something else? Because y'all keep talking about the history. Kobe's husband, Russell, going to tell her to keep her toes over there. In other words, mind her business. Kobe was like, well, I'm just asking. Why can't I ask? I was like, yeah, Russell, you fucking bootleg ass key sweat. How come your wife can't ask Brandon questions? Like y'all was asking his motherfucking wife questions. Did you keep your sour ass toe over there? No, you didn't. So shut the fuck up. Russell didn't want his wife, Kobe, asking Brandon questions because he didn't want Brandon's truth to be revealed, which is that he was messing around with another bitch. Okay. So if Brandon can say that his wife is keeping him from his passion and his dreams, then everybody should know why that is. Okay. And I don't know if Brandon messing around with this new girl, but he's being secretive about it. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be surprised if he was, it's not like he didn't mess around with his other artists. You know what I'm saying? Niggas never like to tell the whole story. Just the part that makes their wives look bad. You know what I'm saying? They want their wives to look like the bad person. Oh, she's keeping me away from my passion and my dreams. Boy, bye. So y'all call me then bust Brandon out. She was like, Brandon, I'm just curious. So you're developing a new artist? Brandon gonna start looking around like he didn't know what she was talking about. 
his wife, Christina, was like, what, she was looking like, what is she talking about? Because Brandon hadn't told Christina about the new hole that he had in the studio, okay? Then Anthony says, he asked, going to say, how did you know? She said, because Russell told me that Brandon had a new artist. And Russell was looking like, oops. I was like, that's exactly what the fuck Brandon get because that whole conversation should have been shut down when it first started. But him and his ponytail wasn't man enough to make that happen. So he let it escalate. And now his wife done found out about the new hoe. So he let it escalate, okay? And this is the result of that. Which is good because his wife should have known. This is why Christina don't trust his ass. He want to go around acting like she just insecure and don't have a real reason not to trust his stupid ass when that's not the case. Brandon said, I told Russell that Christina didn't know yet. And he told him that Christina didn't know yet because he had to find the right way to present it to her. Knowing damn well, he was going to hold that shit in for as long as he could. Probably to when the girl ended up pregnant because it's not like the shit can't happen. He probably had every intention on messing around with that girl. Kobe said that Russell never told her that Christina didn't know about the new artist. But Kobe knew Christina wasn't going to be with that shit though, okay? Because his new artist was a female artist. And that's why she snitched, snitched on his ass while he was sitting up there trying to make her friend look like, you know, this insecure ass wife when she had every reason to feel how she felt. Kobe said that, um, had she known that Christina didn't know, though, she would have never brought it up at her anniversary dinner. Brandon said that, you know, he was going to have a private conversation with his wife. Christina told him that um, it was sad that she had to find out from somebody else that he had a new artist. Kobe was like, so is that the only new artist you're developing? Brandon going to tell her, I know what you're doing. And if you want to do this on our anniversary, then you got to do better than that. And I was like, so what exactly is she doing other than airing your ass the fuck out? So now that his ass was being aired the fuck out, he wanted to say, oh, it's our anniversary. But he sat there on that same anniversary and watched them other niggas, his friends, gang up on his wife with his dry ass martial arts ponytail wearing ass. Kobe was like, I know this nigga ain't coming for me. She said, Brandon, this is your wife. I would expect your wife to know before your boy. Y'all, Kobe's husband told her to stay out of their household. But it was okay for him and Anthony to be in their household, right? Brandon told Kobe that she had her whole leg in their household. But he didn't say shit when his homeboy's legs was in their household. It was okay when they was ganging up on his wife. But his bitch ass get aired the fuck out. And all of a sudden, he wants somebody to stay out of their household. It's the clownery in that dancery for me, bitch. Like, real talk. I would have went and plucked some of that motherfucking lavender and slapped the fuck out his ass with it. His face, whole motherfucking face would have been hot like fire. Ooh. So Christina asked, okay, she asked Brandon who the new artist was. Okay. And she was sitting there, you know, she had started crying. Um, It's like, I, I would have just left. Like, are you kidding me? She asked him who the new artist was. He told her that it was a girl that, what did he say? He said it, it was a um, it was a girl and she was pretty dope. And I was like, you talking about the no singing little booty bitch with the paint on eyebrows? She may have been on dope, but she wasn't dope. So she was like, so is this somebody that is signed to you? He said, yes. She said like with a contract? He said, yes. And she was like, well, that's interesting. You just going out signing contracts without letting your wife know. She said, that's something you should have told me. (coughs) He said, I had plans on telling you. She said, you do that shit before you sign a contract, not after you high yellow, short bus riding ass clown. Y'all, I can't take it. I can't take it. So. His bitch ass going to try to downplay what he did and going to tell her that she was about to get all upset over some paperwork. I would have been like, no, you about to get upset over some paperwork. So look out for them divorce papers, nigga. He going to tell her he done signed hella. No, what do you say? He told her that she done signed hella brand deals without telling him. And he knows that that ain't the same thing. Furthermore, 
she ain't the one who's been caught cheating with anybody that she signed these brand deals with. But of course, leave it to a bitch ass nigga to try to flip it. She said that Brandon has crossed the line with one of his artists and it was devastating for her because she supported that person and took that person up under her wing. And, you know, he's sitting there messing around with her. Christina said that he had an emotional connection with the girl. I say that that's what they told her. They was probably fucking though. But for some reason, he left that bit of information out when talking about his wife not trusting him. So, you know, Christina was crying, steady talking about how, you know, they wasn't going to have time for this and they wasn't going to have time for that because he didn't sign a new artist and everybody looking at her like she crazy, including the band who I thought had left, but their asses were still standing around in the background. Brandon wanted Christina to get up so that they could go off to the side and talk. And I was like, no, sit your ass down. Sit your ass right there in front of everybody and explain why your ass feel like your wife should be cool with you signing another female artist after you was caught messing around with the other one. Coward ass. He going to get up and walk off. Y'all, they showed upcoming episodes for um, this season of the show. <clears throat> and Marceau ass is supposed to be on one of them. I was like, what can he teach anybody? Because I think he was up at a podium speaking or whatever. Child, this show is a mess, just like the other one. But anyway, y'all, that was the episode, all right? So that's going to be all for this review. Thanks so much for being a True T Game member, okay? Y'all take care, and I'll chat with y'all in the next one.